In this video, we will cover some of the most evil people of all time, from the year zero to the present. Well, this video is going to be the year zero to 1700. Part two will be late modern history, onward of 1700. I present to you, 2000 years of evil, part one. We'll start at the very beginning, a man who was born in the year 12, Roman Emperor Caligula. People had liked his father, Germanicus, and by extension liked him at the time of his ascension to the throne at age 25. Caligula, however, had very little experience in governing, but in the beginning, people liked him. He gave large sums of money to citizens and soldiers, he hosted numerous forms of entertainment for the inhabitants of Rome. However, Caligula very shortly developed some kind of brain disease, and he became very cruel. It is unknown whether or not this was a result of his illness, or if he just wanted to seat himself more comfortably in the throne before revealing his true nature. Some of his cruelty proved fatal, killing random people, and having killed people for the weakest of reasons. Once, he was conducting the sacrifice of a bull, but instead the hammer was brought down on the priest's assistant who was holding the bull's head. There was also things he did that were cruel in a different, less deadly way. If he saw a man with thick hair, he would have his head shaved, since he himself was having some hair loss problems. If it got very hot, he would have the awnings over crowds uh, retracted. He also raised taxes and added new ones to pay for his extravagant way of ruling. He took the possessions of those he murdered. He ordered a statue of himself to be built in the great temple in Jerusalem. He attempted to regain some glory by attacking Gaul and Germany but did not accomplish anything. He declared he would attack the island of Britain, although the attack was never launched. In the year 41, people became fed up and some officers formed a conspiracy to assassinate him, which they did successfully. Our next person on our list is another Roman emperor who happens to be Caligula's nephew, Nero. He liked to waste resources on himself, doing things like supposedly fishing with a golden net some even claim that he never wore the same garment more than once. Nero uh, once heard of a plot to kill him, and so he killed anyone that he thought might have been part of the conspiracy. He also seemed to have weird mood swings, uh, like he killed his own wife and then gave her a magnificent burial, built her temples, and forced the people of Rome to worship her. His acts of cruelty increased on a daily basis, and a new conspiracy was formed against him. Nero ended up killing himself when he heard his enemies approaching. That was in the year 68. Jumping forward a couple hundred years, Attila the Hun lived from the year 406 to 453. Just the word Hun leaves a legacy of terror. Side note, in World War I, Germans were commonly referred to as Huns on Allied propaganda posters. Anyway, back to Attila. We are actually missing a lot of information about the Huns. They appeared in northern China in the 3rd century, and are believed to have originated from somewhere around present-day Mongolia or Kazakhstan. They were nomads and had one of the most fearsome cavalries in the world. The earliest accounts of Hunnic cavalries described them as half-horse beings like centaurs. When Attila came into power, he did so by killing his brother. He staged routine massacres and anything he could do to make people afraid of him. We are skipping almost a few hundred years forward now, which brings us to the ruthless warlord Genghis Khan. He created the largest empire the world has seen to date when he and his family went on their conquest, conquering more territory in 25 years than the Romans did in 400. The name Genghis Khan literally means universal leader. He and his army camped outside the walls of what is now Beijing for so long that he began to starve the entire city. Then, he was able to take the city decently easily. He spent a month plundering the city, he built his empire up all over Asia, and his last words were said to have been, I have conquered for you a large empire, but my life was too short to take the whole world. That I leave to you. However, his leadership wasn't all bad. He created a system where people were valued for their talent above anything like their background or ethnicity. His Mongol Empire was also one of the most diverse in terms of the religions of its people. But 
he is still on this list because he did have the qualities of a genocidal maniac. Next on our list, born in 1431 in Transylvania, we have Vlad the Impaler, his real name being Vlad III Dracula. He was likely the inspiration for the most famous vampire of all time. That alone should be enough to get him on this list, but you know, I'll give him a chance. Hold on, let's see what he did. Impaled his enemies on stakes in the battlefield, left a field full of bodies on stakes to scare the Ottomans. Okay, okay, he's definitely on this list, moving on. And our last person for part one, Ivan the Terrible. What is with these nicknames recently? Okay, so Ivan IV was born in 1530 near Moscow. He was crowned the first Tsar of Russia. Compared to a lot of other people through history, he wasn't that bad, but what he all he really did was he had a couple wars, uh, then got frustrated with his own son and killed him. That, that, so, yeah. That's gonna round up part one. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one.